All right, let's continue uh, from where we left off at the end of the first class of the 1st of March. So this essentially counts as your second class on the 1st of March. We have already covered all this. We've covered moneyness of options. We learned about intrinsic value, time value, and the relationship uh, between, uh, you know, how would you express the option premium as a sum of IV and TV. Then we learned about ATM, ITM, OTM by defining them uh, based on the relationship between the strike price and the current price of the underlying asset. Right, then we learned about option sensitivities when we looked at an option pricing model such as uh, this one. We see that the model uh, not only does it provide a theoretical price for the call option and then through put call parity we have a price for the put option. It also gives you the option sensitivities, delta, gamma, vega, theta, rho. All right, so we've already covered all this stuff. Now, then we came into the, okay, I'll just briefly uh, explain here about, uh, if you see, uh, what you see in this day, we said that this is actually an option pricing model. That's what the market refers to it as. But in fact, actually, it's an option valuation model and not a pricing model because you don't really need a model to price the option. You can, the market is doing that anyway through the interaction of uh, demand and supply. The market is setting a price, so the pricing is being done. So this is actually bad nomenclature, but this is what the industry uses, so you have to get used to it. But in your mind, you should know conceptually that what people in the market call an option pricing model is actually an option valuation model. It's a type of fair value model. Okay, now if you want to see, right now you can't see what we call the specification of the model. You can see that this model has these kinds of inputs, exercise price, days, interest rates, dividend yield, vol, etc., and uh, underlying, etc. And these are the outputs, this one mainly, and then this one. But you can't really see how the inputs lead to the output. If you want to see, so if you want to see that, that would be called the specification of the model. You can just go here and see it. So this is the solution to the Black Scholes. Uh, this is a solution to a partial differential equation. So this will give you essentially, in some sense, the specification of the model. This is really this is the solution uh, for the call option and the put option values. But you can get some idea of the mathematics using some reasonably high level mathematics using, uh, you know, uh, certain theorems like Ito's lemma uh, and uh, those kinds of slightly advanced mathematics, which uh, at this stage we don't need to bother with because we are not really concerned with the the pricing of the option, uh, the theory behind the pricing or the valuation. Uh, we are concerned with how to apply uh, what are the features of this product, that is the option, uh, the instrument that we call option, uh, call an option, the, the features of that product, we are interested in the applications of the product. We're not really interested in the pricing and the theory behind the pricing at this stage. And that would be an advanced topic for research. Okay, so this is your option pricing, uh, option valuation model, strictly speaking. Uh, we'll call it an OVM, uh, and these are your outputs. Okay, so what we discussed is, we discussed this. Now, now we are interested in these terms, gamma, vega, and what is what is meant by short gamma, short, long gamma, etc. So one of the things you have to understand when you're long options, you are said to be long gamma. When you're short options, it doesn't matter whether it's a call option or a put option. If you're short an option, you're supposed to be short gamma. And if you're long an option, you're long gamma. Essentially what this means is, uh, if you are long, let's take the long side. Okay, if you're long an option, you're long gamma. What you're actually playing for is, you're playing for high volatility in the underlying price. Now here's your GDX price, okay? So essentially you're looking for something where there's a lot of movement there's a lot of up and down movement in the underlying asset price. So that's what you're playing for if you're long gamma, okay? That is normally, uh, that is uh, the understanding of uh, what is meant by long gamma. If you're long gamma, you benefit from uh, dramatic movement and an increase in the volatility of the stock of the underlying asset. Vega is uh, obviously the vol, the sensitivity to the vol input. Uh, and if you are long short options, you are such said to be long short vega. So long options, essentially long gamma, long vega, and uh, short options, short gamma, short vega. Now, the other thing is, uh, before we come to this, theta, we've already covered all this stuff. You've seen that uh, both options, long positions in either a call or a put will have a negative theta because uh, the option will keep on losing value every day. Okay, now the other part, the last part that we looked at when eyeball rises, option prices at risk will uh, rise 
IVOL falls, then option prices said risk parables will fall. And what we discussed is we looked at uh, the uh, vol input here. And so essentially what we said, the last part we discussed in the previous session was that uh, the uh, this is your option valuation model and it need not necessarily correspond to the to the um, actual market price of the option. So let's look at an example. If we set up this as an example and uh, so we just take any, let's say we look at any option price here the call option is worth three dollars and if you look at an option price which is worth say uh, six dollars then uh, one of the things you can clearly see is if, if the option is actually this is your OVM valuation model which is giving you a theoretical price which means this is the fair value remember the theoretical price is equal is conceptually the same as the fair value okay according to this fair value model this model is saying that if these are your inputs then the call option should be worth three dollars roughly let's forget the decimals but when you look at the market price for this option with these same parameters you find that 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 option is worth about six dollars so this means that your vol input is too low because the rest of the information is already known so your vol input is too low so let's change the vol to 45 so instead of saying that the uh, one standard deviation move in the stock is likely to be 25 uh, one standard deviation uh, annual movement in the stock is likely to be 25 let's just say that it's going to be 45 okay and let's see what happens to the call option price okay so it's 5.3 still not come taking us to 6 so this is how actually you figure out what imply eyeball is okay you can see the process of uh, the determination of eyeball uh, it is done exactly in the same way that you do IRR you can't analytically solve for IRR. You have to iteratively uh, approximate to the solution, okay? So you put in 45 for your volatility input and you still see that the call option price is 5.3, theoretical price, the fair value, but the market price is six. So the question basically is, what should the vol input be to give you a fair value equal to the market price. So what you do is you keep on raising it. Let's make it like 48. No, still not working. Okay, so let's make it uh, 52. Okay, so we're kind of there. Now if we make it like 51, it's a little bit over six. Okay, so 5.98. So you get the picture, right? Okay, so if I, I don't know if this takes input. Uh, yeah, so it's closer. It does take a little bit of uh, this kind of input. So I'll make it 551.3. It will be, now it's getting closer to six. So essentially what we can see by doing this kind of, this is exactly what you would do mathematically as well, because you cannot actually back out the solution for eyeball. You have to do it in this iterative approximation method, exactly like what you do for, uh, what you do for IRR. You can't analytically solve for IRR. So, uh, by, by analytics, this is an important point to understand at this stage. I've used a couple of terms. Uh, let's uh, teach you that as well at this stage. Um, we are discussing implied volatility, so let's uh, discuss this, okay? IVOL, IVOL is OVM that is option valuation model. Okay, let's put it this way. The vol input in the OVM, which makes the OVM output, that is throughout um, output a fair value okay which is fv for the opt that is the option okay uh, so understand this what is eyeball mechanically speaking mechanically speaking eyeball is the vol input in the ovm which makes the ovm output okay what do i let's take it step by step so we are very clear mechanically we are defining eyeball eyeball is the vol input in the ovm which is this 
you can see what's happening here you saw me putting in different values all the time I was just changing the vol input uh, figure okay the vol and I was doing it in the OVM okay so it is that vol input in the OVM which makes the OVM output a um, yeah which makes the OVM let me not put outlet here output here uh, let's make it let's write it this way throw out a fair value for the option okay so that particular vol input in the OVM which makes the OVM throw out a fair value for the option so the OVM is throwing out a fair value for the option uh, for any value that you put in because we are now we are interested in a particular type of vol input uh, and that is that particular value for the vol input like in this case 51.3 which makes the OVM throw out a fair value for the option that is exactly it's a little redundant actually exactly equal exactly equal to the market price for the OPT okay so this definition has three parts so I vol is a particular vol input in the OVM okay specific vol input in the OVM which makes this OVM throw out a particular call option theoretical price or fair value which is exactly equal to the market price for the option this is what is determined by the interaction of buying and selling in the marketplace okay and so as such it does not necessarily have to come uh, you know refer to the OVM but this is what eyeball essentially is okay so eyeball as and then we can from this we can actually learn something else which is eyeball is a uh, once again I'm making you uh, some of you might find it a little boring I'm repeating the same stuff but once again I'm making you go through this exercise to make your concepts 100% clear and the use of the language also 100% clear eyeball is a species of vol input in an OVM remember just like we said refresh your memory contract is a species of agreement whenever you write a sentence like that what you remember is that because a contract is a species of agreement all contracts are agreements but all agreements in general will not be contracts okay so this is a smaller set contracts and this is the larger set this is how you write the language contract is a species of agreement and now what am I saying I'm saying eyeball is a species of vol input in an OVM okay you've already seen this in action what does it really mean you saw me trying to enter various values for the vol input I put in for it was first I put in I think 45 it was 25 first I put in 45 it didn't work then I made it 48 and every time I was putting in a value for the vol input it was actually generating an option price which means the OVM was actually giving me an output a fair value output it's just that that was not equal to six and six is special because six is the market price so I'm watching on the one hand I see that the market price is six and I keep entering numerous figures into this vol input field 45 48 50 and I keep getting uh, fair value outputs from the OVM but those fair value outputs are not equal to the market price of six okay so there are many uh, vol inputs that I put in and only one of them turned out to be the I vol which is in this case 51.3 if we just ignore the decimals now that 51.3 I vol uh, vol input I get a fair value for the option which is equal to the market price so that's why you can see that so I vol is a species of vol input into an OVM because whatever you input into an OVM is a vol input into the OVM but every vol input is not an I vol because every vol input is not going to give you a theoretical fair value which is equal to the market price only one vol input is going to give you that result and that is the one whatever it happens to be in this case it's 51.3 which produces a fair value equal to the market price okay which you see independently 
So that's what eyeball means mechanically. Eyeball is a species, that's why I say eyeball is a species of wall input, okay? Obviously it is a wall input, but it's a special, all wall inputs will not be eyeball because all wall inputs are not going to produce an, uh, a, a fair value equal to the market price. So let's define eyeball once again. Okay, so eyeball, okay, we've already done that here on top, okay? So eyeball, the definition of eyeball is the, it's make, it's the, wall input in the OVM which makes the OVM throw out a fair value for the option which is equal exactly equal to the option price okay so you've learned this about the eyeball now let's now quickly go on to some of the other stuff so this might be a slightly short video because I just want to make sure that in this video I give you the uh, framework necessary for trading options so you've already learned about gamma and theta what you have to remember you have to memorize this in a sense because over time as you read it you will you know it will automatically get memorized that essentially long option positions long gamma and negative theta okay so what happens is in most option trading especially when you're uh, when you're looking at it from a market maker point of view there is this thing called the gamma theta trade-off okay that is essentially you if you are long options you will benefit from dramatic movement like what was happening over here dramatic up and down movement in the underlying asset price if you're long options but uh, every day that you're long options you're losing money on the theta okay you're losing money on the theta because every day when it lo every long position has negative theta whether long call or long put so this is the trade-off it's it's just like what we showed you in that framework for uh, the firm trying to balance uh, you know uh, trying to balance the need to make uh, to earn money on the one hand and to stay solvent on the other hand well in order to earn money the firm has to uh, we go back to your okay so this is what is meant by the trade-off you understand trade-offs very well I think uh, the trade-off between the pleasure of looking at whatsapp in the class and uh, the risk of getting caught and losing points that's also a trade-off okay so here you see a trade-off firm is facing a trade-off between growing earnings and trying to say solvent in order to grow earnings you have to increase risk to say solvent you have to reduce risk okay so this is these are mutually contradictory so that's why you have a trade-off okay so uh, this is the gamma theta trade-off which market makers are very concerned with because uh, if you want to benefit from long gamma you have to be long options but if you go long options then you're losing money on theta and on the other hand if you go short options to go short gamma there is a risk involved in that but in, in return for that risk, you get compensated by picking up the theta when you ben which you benefit from when you're short options. Okay, so gamma theta trade-off as such at this point of time, we are not very concerned with because this is something that really concerns market makers. This, this becomes very important when you're hedging an options book. Okay, so at this point of time, we are not going to spend too much time worrying about that because our main concern is to equip you for your project in which you are not going to be allowed to do any underlying uh, hedging in the underlying uh, assets so typically when a market maker is managing an option book he will be doing a lot of hedging in the underlying asset which you're not going to be allowed to do in your project okay so therefore we move to a slightly different focus okay we look at uh, what I call the Vega theta trade-off this is what is more important for your uh, project similar to the gamma theta trade-off because Remember, Vega is the sensitivity of the option price to changes in the vol input. Okay, so if the, essentially, if the if the I vol uh, increases, it's a circular way of putting it, but let's say essentially the uh, the I vol increases so that the fair value keeps space with the market price. If the I vol increases, how much will the call option price increase by? That is given to you by the Vega. So, if you want to benefit, as you see that if as you can see here, vol if you increase the vol input the option price goes up both calls and puts so if you are long options okay uh, essentially uh, in a way we say it's long ball and long Vega as you can see here here it says a short a long option position is long Vega okay which means you're set to rise is so set to benefit from increases in vol in, in vol uh, and increase in I vol essentially okay so um, and eyeball has a connection to H4. So essentially what we are concerned in this project is because here we are only going to be buying and selling options. So we want to come quickly to a 
uh, input uh, quickly to a framework which will help us to trade and uh, let's look at this so there is a Vega theta trade-off that you guys are going to be uh, facing in this project okay you will want to buy options if you want if you uh, want to benefit from an increase in vol but the problem of buying options whether you buy calls or puts is that now every day see what happens in a long option position the theta is negative okay whether you're long calls or puts okay this is actually showing you the long option position profile uh, Greeks okay so therefore in order to benefit from the Vega you want to be long options but uh, when you go long options every day you're getting hit by the theta so it's it's very uh, delicate and so there you have to get your timing uh, exactly right and that's the trade-off that you're facing okay so eyeball uh, has an impact on option prices and the movements in the underlying also have an impact on option prices okay so this part is captured by the delta and the gamma and this part is captured on by the vega so therefore essentially you're focusing on two main drivers of option prices in this uh, project one is you're looking at changes in the moneyness of options remember ATM OTM and that's another way of stating that is basically you're looking at changes because if once you fix the strike price you're looking at changes in the underlying yeah this is one of your underlying tickers GDX okay you're looking at changes in the underlying in the changes in the value of the underlying asset obviously if you were long calls when the market was here at $20 if you went long calls the market now is $22 obviously you're making money because the intrinsic value of your option is much higher okay so the total uh, value total value of the option is much higher assuming no change in time value so uh, so this is one thing you are you are uh, your option price uh, you're buying and selling options both calls and puts and option prices are sensitive mainly uh, as far as you're concerned in this project they are responding to changes in the underlying asset prices and they're also responding to changes in the vol okay and that is the changes in the I vol essentially the markets what you have to understand is the option market essentially separately keeps an eye on I vol although market prices uh, keep changing as an interaction uh, you know as a function of the interaction between demand and supply we essentially plot I vol charts and try to track how I vol is changing so as the market price changes with nothing else changing the uh, level of vol, vol that is required as call options prices as option prices rise uh, with uh, ceteris paribus you will have to change the uh, vol input in order to make the fair value from the option price model option valuation model equal the market price so that's why you would have to change the i vol so as, op, as option prices rise i vol is also rising so the market keeps track of i vol using charts like this as you can see here this is a chart of Oracle eyeball and it is showing we'll make it really big Oracle eyeball you can see here all right uh, so the IV index is the eyeball index so this is the uh, the kind of like the orange line so you can see as so essentially what does this mean you will get eyeball charts and when you see the eyeball chart going down what it essentially means is eyeball is now to be taken as a proxy for option prices in general so when you see option eyeball dropping you will say that eyeball uh, that option prices in general are falling both calls and puts when eyeball is rising you will say that option prices in general are rising then you see it falls again and then it, there is a long rising trend again it has started falling okay as you can see the eyeball the index here is in percentage terms because all the eyeballs are given to you in percentage terms okay so this is the first thing you have to learn to read eyeball charts and charts will go basically up and down if the eyeball chart is going down that means options are becoming less uh, less expensive and as eyeball charts are going up options are becoming more expensive both calls and puts okay so uh, what are we going to do now here what is our framework so your option prices are affected by movements in the underlying asset price and changes in eyeball obviously they're also affected by certain other inputs which you saw in the uh, OVM you see there are some other inputs but we are just going to ignore them for the time being we are mainly focused on the vol and the underlying price how the option price is responding to changes in the underlying price 
and the wall and that's the game that you're going to play so what you're going to do is uh, so you so these are the impacts so, and the impact of these two factors one can go in your favor the other can go against you and depending on the magnitude of the positive or negative impact one can actually offset more than offset the other so you have to be aware of this okay so here we come to the most important thing before we come to that let's look at quickly the option positions okay and market so what are the two types of we have to be clear about this what are the two types of positions or let's see what what are the two types of options you have calls and puts okay and in general which you learned much earlier when you covered asset uh, markets asset classes markets and instruments what are the two types of positions long and short so when you combine these two the types of options and the types of positions you end up with four types of option positions long calls short calls long puts short puts okay so these are your four types of option positions okay now we come to this matrix now we've already given you the we're going to draw this we're going to show you the matrix it's in your spreadsheet file now we are going to come to a decision matrix okay the broad decision matrix how are you going to take a view uh, how what are you going to do let's take an example first where you okay let's say we are dealing with a gdx okay so i'll give you these charts are already there in your notes right at the top you'll see the hyperlinks i've given you a hyperlink for short uh, stock charts uh, if you click that you'll get gdx if you want to put in some other ticker which you have in your option project uh, just enter some other ticker here if you want oracle just put oracle here and the chart will change to oracle okay and so on and so forth for all your tickets i'm just going to show you the trick for gdx and uh, then we can uh, move forward okay so this is how i'm going to give you a model of how you're going to trade you look at the gdx you figure out what you want to be let's say you have to figure out let's say look at i'm going to use ta and i form a you have to form a view essentially okay and let's say in this market my view is i look at the chart and i see the trends and i say that okay my view is bullish on the underlying asset i'm bullish okay so i register that i'm bullish now but this is not sufficient because i'm going to be trading options so i also have to have a view on the eye wall uh, for gdx options gdx is the underlying okay it's the etf gold miners gold mining stocks um, but this is just the underlying asset because i'm trading options i also have to have a view on the eye wall this is the new part that you're learning in order to trade options you need to have a view not just on the underlying asset which you're familiar with so far uh, but now you have to have an additional view on the eyeball so we find a eyeball chart for gdx which is the here okay there is a index already for that okay so if you see this one this is actually is this a five-year chart yeah i think this is a five-year chart with the same time frame i take this five-year chart i i form a view which is bullish on the underlying asset okay and then i use this chart now this in real life might be a little bit problematic in some cases you may not get the chart but we are going to assume we are learning the theory at this stage and i think for most of the tickers you'll at least get one year of data for eyeball you get one year eyeball charts okay so i form my view on the underlying asset now this is the eyeball chart this is the chart for the eyeball of uh, gdx okay of options on gdx so what this is how do they construct this chart they keep looking at option prices both calls and puts on gdx okay and by looking at those option prices they figure out what is the eyeball uh, that is necessary as an input into the ovm in order to produce those same option prices and then they register that this is just time series data they plot that okay and that's how the eyeball uh, is, uh, is chart is developed so essentially what this gives you is it gives you a broad idea about how the cost of options on gdx has been moving okay at this point obviously it was very high okay at uh, to, in 2011 it was very high then it has started falling then it goes up from time to time so this is a this is basically an index an eyeball chart essentially tells you how expensive options are okay or how cheap or how expensive options are at this stage you can see essentially that option prices on the gdx 
are at their lowest level probably the lowest level and there may be some mi minor differences here but pretty much close to their lowest level since the data series started which means in almost eight years nine years these are the lowest levels of option prices in general for options on GDX okay so if you're a mean reversion type of guy this kind of thing probably is going to make you bullish on options okay because you see this keeps it keeps going down then obviously as a mean reversion guy you expect this to turn around and jump up and start going back to the mean so let's say I'm a mean reversion guy uh, when I form my view on eyeball so my underlying view on GDX was bullish and my underlying view on eyeball is also bullish okay so what do I do now I've got the two views the two important things I have to have views on now I go to my matrix remember that when eyeball when eyeball goes down that means options are becoming cheaper in general and the reverse and this is you already know the views on the other line let's go to your uh, calc file in the option sheet I think this is in the option sheet yeah it's in the option sheet all right here's a little framework that I've made for you guys okay this is not very pretty of course but this is how it's meant to be seen this is the the framework overall this is where it is okay so since we know that when eyeball goes up I uh, when eyeball goes up options in general become more expensive okay and when eyeball goes down options in general becoming are becoming less uh, expensive underlying asset obviously we can have a bullish view or a bearish view so what did you see let's take the example that I started with okay uh, what was my view my view on the underlying asset was bullish and my view on eyeball was also bullish okay so therefore what is my decision it's to buy a call so this is your decision matrix you've got to get familiar with this matrix but see how it makes sense so because what we said eyeball if I if you're bullish on eyeball means you you expect option prices in general to go up so in this column in this bullish column you're only going to be buying options could be calls, could be puts, but you're going to be only buying options. When your view on eyeball is bearish, you're only going to be selling options. So sell, sell. Now, in this box, let's take this. You're going to be buying, but what should you buy, call or put? But if you are bullish on the underlying asset and you have to buy an option, will you buy a put or you'll buy a call? Are you going to buy a call? You will buy a call because that's the one that benefits when the underlying asset actually goes upwards, right? And similarly, you'll buy a put when the underlying asset view is bearish because puts are what benefit when stock prices, when underlying asset prices fall. So using this logic, you familiarize yourself with this matrix. So this is, you already have your decision framework and I'll just give you a little bit more of a, uh, a set of rules, okay? So you already have your, so you, your logic is like this. Take each ticker, take each ticker in your uh, option trading uh, project form a view on the underlying I took the example of GDX I formed a view on the GDX I looked at the eyeball chart of uh, of uh, sorry I looked at the eyeball chart of where is that chart gone here eyeball chart of the GDX options and I formed a view on the eyeball for GDX and that was bullish as well then I came to this that brought me to the um, to the framework and I decided that my decision is to buy a call so now we have some clarity between all these options I have zeroed in on buy call that's my strategy and we have a couple of more decisions to for, uh, take which is remember that in the case of options we have some other decision problems additional decision problems okay because we have to I'm going to rush through with this a little bit uh, okay so this all this logic is explained over here this is just nothing but the explanation of that matrix okay so you have some additional problems when you have to uh, buy options you have to decide the expiry date because there are many expiry dates you have to decide which strike uh, to choose okay that's another option that you have to choose and exercise style is not to be chosen and you don't have a decision here because these are all American style options US equity options are all American style so you don't have to make this decision so how do you decide the expiry uh, date and the uh, the uh, 
which strike rate to choose and which expiry date to choose so here I've given you some additional guidance okay choose uh, just go through that uh, essentially you can see uh, there is some guidance given to you here uh, you can uh, so one of the things you want to look at is uh, the uh, for the strikes that you look at you'll find that the option the uh, eyeball uh, structure is not the same the term structure of eyeball uh, is uh, there, there is also a type term structure there's also a variation in eyeball when you look at the TWS option trader and you mouse over the prices you'll find that the term structure of eyeball is uh, the 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 eyeballs actually vary across um, the eyeballs vary across strikes okay when you mouse over the uh, option premium you'll find that the percentage figures that are shown those are the eyeball figures okay so in general what you're going to do is we're going to go through this a little bit um, okay in general when you're selling options you try to sell short dated options because there the theta is much higher and when you're buying options you try to buy longer dated options because they have less theta and they have more Vega so you have a double benefit okay so this is one way to solve this problem because you have an additional decision problem should I buy or sell a short term or a long term option what should be the expiration date push yourself to as longer dates if you're buying and towards shorter dates if you're selling and as far as the strike is concerned try to look at uh, you know strikes which have higher vol if you're selling you want to sell so remember that this is actually a this is actually an index of uh, the this chart that you have the eyeball chart that's an index of uh, option premium okay so in general, when uh, when the eyeball is high, the option is more expensive. So you try to sell more expensive options. So you try to find along the strikes, you try to find those options which have higher uh, eyeball. Okay, and there is a balance of that that you have to strike with the sensitivity of Vega. You can see, okay, uh, the uh, ATM options have the highest Vega. Okay, generally out of the only options have uh, lower Vega. But the other thing is also that absolute uh, higher levels of volatility are a better sell. Okay, so that's what you would try to do. All right, so we'll end this tutorial here. So you start your trading, live trading from Monday, and we'll continue with the discussions uh, later on.